Um, so tonight we're going to talk about Power Apps. Um, my name is Elizabeth Davis. I'm a technical consultant at Improving. Um, I started through the Accelerator program where they brought in a group of about 10 to 11 people who had previous experience in development, and they trained us on Microsoft Dynamics CRM and the Power Platform, which is where I was first exposed to Power Apps. After that, I actually um, started a project where I was for like, a, like an insurance company in Ohio that needed a, like a cost-efficient temporary set of applications to help support their um, customers, basically to store their policy and um, claims information. And be, like while they were actually building like an enterprise level app, are you guys able to hear me? Okay, <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, while they were able to, I mean, while they were working to build like an enterprise level, a custom application. And from what I understand, the, like the original developer on that project, um, she was able to mock that out or, or get like the, the baseline app for that project um, basically built in like a week using Power Apps, like Canvas apps, which is really, I mean, they, like the whole time we were there, like we were constantly adding different like components to it and customizing it. But um, that's kind of unheard of. I really like it as a, as a product. So that's what we are going to talk about today. So as far as our agenda, um, I wanted to discuss why you should consider Power Apps as a developer, uh, review like the different types of applications that you can build with Power Apps, have a brief walkthrough through a model-driven app, and um, we are going to add another component to a Canvas app for an outside sales team um, of a home appliance repair company. So um, why did I want to discuss Power Apps with you guys today? I wanted to give busy software developers a, um, an extra tool that they could add to their um, technology, their technical toolkit. So whenever their friends, family members, or uh, colleagues approach them about different like utility projects to help them like with their businesses and their day-to-day -day operations, we don't, all, we don't automatically have to turn them away. We can um, possibly consider using Power Apps. Um, with Power Apps, you can actually build a Canvas app or a model-driven app um, in a fraction of the amount of time that it would normally take to build a custom app. And uh, as a developer, you can normally build an app within weeks that would normally take you months to build. Because it's a pre and a lot of it is plug and play. So um, as an introduction to Power Apps, um, it is a no to low code application development platform um, that was developed for everyday business users, not necessarily developers, to be able to leverage their PowerPoint and Excel knowledge to build high quality applications, so that way businesses don't always have to hire a developer. Um, for us, that's actually beneficial because we don't necessarily have to actually build the apps ourselves. We can actually um, refer our friends, family members, and colleagues to different resources and tutorials that they can use to learn how to build it themselves, like whatever apps that they would like to have built. So, uh, Power Apps actually interfaces with Microsoft 365, uh, Microsoft Dynamics, and Azure uh, to take advantage of their organizational administrative capabilities to basically um, manage like the different levels of access that different types of users have to components and data used within the applications. So there are three primary types of Power Apps. The first type of Power App that we have available are model-driven apps. Um, they are... <clears throat> So model-driven apps are no-code applications that are dependent on the Dataverse, um, they, which is like the internal database of Power Apps that all applications built within a solution can access. Um, a solution is basically like an application toolkit that, that can contain multiple applications that all are uh, connected to the same Dataverse. Um, model-driven apps typically have a very thin user interface layer over the Dataverse so that the primary focus is on the data and exposing it to um, different users in meaningful ways at uh, different levels of an organization through the use of views, forms, graphs, and dashboards. 
They are responsive and they can be customized with JavaScript for functionality beyond what uh, normally ships with the toolkit. But the thing is that like with, um, like there's a certain point like where you actually may want to opt to use a Canvas app instead of a model-driven app uh, because Canvas apps are more built for customization over a model-driven app where, where the focus is like to actually display like the data. As far as the access is concerned, um, data is used and accessed by the organization's internal users and administrators based on like the role and group assignments. Uh, the role that a user has uh, typically dictates like what type of access that they have to data, what they can do with the data, and whose data they're able to access, whether it's their data or someone else's data, um, maybe possibly like the team that they manage. So for instance, if we, like a salesperson would be able to see their own accounts, customers, contacts, et cetera, but their manager would be able to see not only their own personal sale, mm -hmm. like their own personal customers, accounts, contacts, they, they'll also be able to see their, like the, their team's um, information as well. So I kind of wanted to talk a little bit more about the Dataverse. Um, it's Power Apps in-house database. Uh, it comes prepackaged with a set of tables that are commonly used in um, business applications uh, that they also have sample data uh, loaded in as well. Uh, the tables are fully customizable and you can add new columns and um, actually new tables to the Dataverse which is really pretty interesting. You're not able to delete anything though, um, but you don't have to necessarily use those columns. They can be accessed by all three different types of applications that are created in the Power Platform, not just model-driven apps. You can configure like the forms, views, charts, and the tables from the Dataverse directly uh, to be available in um, all the uh, model-driven apps. Okay, so we are actually going to take a look at the data. Well, we're actually going to take a look at the Dataverse, and then we're going to transition to model-driven apps. Let's see. Not yet. Yeah, we will go. No, it's okay. Um, it's actually like Power Portal, so I haven't um, gone into, so I just kind of wanted to just like take a, a tour of like the model driven apps. And then um, there's a third type, we're not going to go in depth with that one, but I just kind of wanted to like briefly like touch on it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so this is the homepage of, oh, you're not, you guys are not able to see that. Hmm. Well, let's see. I am actually trying to, oh, how do I? Yeah, um, just on the end slide show, just so that you're not messing me up. Okay. And then, oh. uh, yeah, so you want to be able to see what's, uh, what's up here? Yes. So let's. Um, I want them to be able to see it. <laughs> oh, okay. And then do the duplicate. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we are at the Dataverse. I really appreciate your help, Michael. Um, <laughs> um, but we're at like the Dataverse. Well, this is the homepage of Power Apps. That feels a little bit different on that screen. But this is the homepage for Power Apps. And we are going to go to the tables section, which is actually where the Dataverse is, and kind of take a tour of the different tables in the Dataverse. So as I mentioned, it comes preloaded with like different tables that we normally use like in business scenarios. So for instance, like accounts, addresses, appointments, uh, contacts, emails um, that, uh, and um, the tables themselves are like preloaded with data. They have columns, they have views, they have forms attached to them. We are going to take a look at the contact table.
And here is some of the sample data that the contact table has in it. Here are the columns that um, the contact table comes like preloaded with. Like there's an account column, an address column, just different fields that would be common to contact a contact. Um, if you want, you can actually add a new contact, I mean, a new column to the contact table here. And these are like the different types of columns that are available. These are the different formats that are available for um, the different types of columns. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. So these are some of the Oh, you're okay. Yes, so these are some of the columns that are uh, in the contacts table. As I mentioned, like you can modify and edit it there. We're actually going to go back to the, um, like the home page, so to speak, for the contact table. And we're going to take a look at like some of the views and the forms that it comes with. So basically a view is kind of like a saved query, essentially. Um, like a, it's like a query of all the columns that you have in this contacts table. And we're gonna go to the all contacts view. So um, those different views, they actually come like, they, they're just part of, uh, they basically ship with Power Apps like with this table. So these are all the different views that um, any model driven, any app that's like built with Power Apps can have access to or basically can like import into the application for use. I'm going to the all uh, contacts view. So as you can see, I mean, it's pretty user friendly because it's, it's basically like no code. You can actually extend it using JavaScript, but overall it's pretty like no code. Um, and let's see. So if we want to add like a, a column, we can just go here and just add that column to the view. Pretty simple. We can save it if we wanted to. We're not going to do that. If we want to add um, sorting or filters, we can do that here to this view and then save it. So here we can actually go to access the forms. And these are all the different forms, which is basically like a row of like the table, like just like a, it basically just shows um, a row of, of data. Takes a while for it to load, and this is actually pretty normal for uh, Power App. That's one of the drawbacks. So basically, here are all the different like fields that the form has like already on it for the for like a new contact. We can add fields if you want to. We can also remove them. We can delete them here. We want to like in part customize them if you want to hide them or edit them we can do it here but the reason why i wanted to show you guys like the forms and the views is because we can actually use those in the model driven apps which we are going to look at here so here is a model driven app um this is like one of the different like one of the three types of power apps that are available and here's like the contacts table. 
basically pulled in, like that data pulled into this app. And we, if we go here, we will actually see the view that we saw in the Dataverse. We can pull it in here for use in the app. And we're able to configure the security where depending on who's logged in, like the different roles and the groups that they're assigned to, uh, will basically determine what views they have access to and what forms they have access to. So yeah, this is uh, the same information that we saw in the other view here this model-driven app. And if we click on one of the rows, we actually can see the form that we saw, I mean, that we went into earlier. So um, basically, model-driven apps basically pull in that data that we uh, customize in the Dataverse here. We can add it here and basically configure it. Yes. 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 You would make a delete just based upon another data model mm -hmm. and then do it again. Yes. And then um, it would change the data model, but wouldn't update the delete. Does this, does this still um, happen? I think it does update it actually now. I think so. Um, it's been a long time since it's been updated. It used to be just like something you know, kind of sort of wonky, kind of. Yeah, it's been going through a couple times. No, I think it. I think it. If you, I think it may depend on where you do it, but I think if you do it in the dataverse, it'll update it. I believe so. Well, I don't know if they was because there. There used to be the. I think it was like classic, or there was another uh, form of uh, Power Apps. Basically, like, it was a different format of like the same information. And so this is, I think, like the new unified interface, or there's a different. This is a different. Um, it's like they basically put like a new user interface on top of like what was there before. And I think they've, they've kind of smoothed out some of the kinks that were there before. Oh, okay. It does integrate with Azure like that. Yeah, that's true. But, um, okay. Yes. Oh, what happened? Okay. Okay. So here you're in Microsoft Dynamics and on the other side the data was in the Dataverse. Yes. So you have to like query Dynamics from the Dataverse to get dynamic data there or, or I think you have to have like a Dynamics like subscription actually. Okay. So there's different like flavors of uh, Microsoft and we're not gonna get into Dynamics because that's a whole different like right. conversation. It's like so there are a lot of so Dynamics is like the competitor for like Salesforce. All right, so you're able to, um, and there's like different flavors of dynamics. Like you have dynamics like for sales, for marketing, um, for I think uh, like for people who like go out and like service people. So there's different flavors of dynamics and there's like a baseline set of tables that ships with dynamics, but then depending on like what flavor of dynamics that you have will determine like all the extra tables that you're able to, to basically build apps from. So um, yeah. Just trying to, yeah, because I know there's some data that's in dynamics already. Yes. So I was trying to see the relationship between dynamics and, and power apps. Yeah. Power yeah, there I mean it it's the the subscription, like it, it can be kind it can be a little bit complicated. Not the subscription, but like just the billing, like like the licensing is complicated for power apps. I am gonna warn you guys about that. But um, once you get that up and going, it's okay. <laughs> I like it as a as a uh, tool. But there are some, there are some kinks you have to kind of get used to, like as far as like getting up and going. Um, but it like the, the the applications themselves are like nice. So that's why I mean that's why I wanted to present it to you guys. So yeah. Okay, so we are going to go back to our presentation. So um, I think you were asking about like the other app, like the other app type. We're not going to go in depth with Power Portals, but basically there are websites that an organization can use to present its data to external users. Like the other app types are normally available for just 
internal users for an organization. That means that they have to have a license and they need to be like logged in for the most part. But Power Portal is a, because it's a website. Um, you're able to like administrate people who have like anonymous access or like anonymous users. Um, and you're able to dictate like what pages, like views, forms that like are in the dataverse, like what you expose to them and what you don't, what you hide. So, but we're going to focus primarily on Canvas apps and MDAs during our session. Yeah. Okay, so we're at my favorite app type, um, Canvas apps. Um, they're highly customizable because the user experience is like the focal point opposed to the MDAs or the model driven apps. They're very similar to WPF and XAML um, in the sense that you have different um, like controls and templates that you can drag and drop on the screen. And you can basically control the behavior and appearance of those controls uh, with not code behind, but basically there's a language called PowerFX. You can create custom controls um, called components and custom data connectors uh, with the use of APIs. There are over 600 data connectors that can be mixed and matched to bring uh, data into the application. As far as user access is concerned, um, you can basically access a Canvas app um, through a web link, through, um, you can actually download like a, a Power Apps, like mobile app onto your phone to access like your mm -hmm. own, I mean, like whatever Canvas apps that you have access to, and then also through Microsoft Teams. You can also basically take advantage of like the, like the phone's like capabilities, like the, the features of the phone, like the camera and um, like location and all that as well. Here are some of the common data connectors that you can basically uh, bring in data into the app through, which um, include like Office 365, Oracle, Excel, and to see like a list of all of the data connectors, you can actually go to that website at the very bottom. If you wanted to see like what you can basically connect to Power Apps to like what data sources. Okay, so we are going to take a look at a Canvas app. Said Windows P. So um, this is a Canvas app for like a like a home appliance repair company uh, for like their outside sales team. Whenever this is like just like a made up scenario, um, but if they're like out canvassing and they want to enter in like uh, new potential customers that their manager can follow up with, um, we have like this scenario. And what we would like to do, or what I like, I'd like to demonstrate to you guys today, is how to actually add like a new salesperson to this app. Um, where so uh, we have. Like if we go to Christian Lewis, these are all of the different potential customers that Christian Lewis has uh, added that his manager can follow up with. And here are the, and here's the form. And he can submit, he can make changes here for like an existing prospective customer or he can actually um, add a new one here if he wants to. What we want to do is actually add a, uh, a place like where we can add like a new salesperson. And basically, this is actually being stored on SharePoint. With the data. Okay. Oh. Oh, um, well, so I actually, so I have the app um, kind of, I had it like preloaded um, just for time's sake, but. Um, which, so were you, did you want me to like walk through like the, like well, the. I, I just, I just wanted to leave it as, uh, the words again, like, uh, 
did that really fast. Yes, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I did practice. Uh, let's go back to this. So if we go back to the home page of Power Apps. And if we go. Yes, so oh, so the reason why I was in SharePoint, I was showing you guys like like the kind of like the back end that we're using for um, that uh, the uh, application. Yes. Okay. Yes. No. <laughs> no. Thanks for thanks for uh, letting me know that. Yeah, I was actually just kind of showing like what the app does. Like so, we're using SharePoint as like kind of like a back end, um, so to speak for our app, and you can use Excel, you can use SQL. Um, there are different data connectors that are available in um, Canvas apps, but yeah, so what we are going to do is here, yes. So for the model apps, you're mainly using data first, like the back. Yes. Uh, Canvas apps, you have more flexibility, mm -hmm. but you can still use data first. Yep. Okay. And I, we're, we can um, kind of go through that process. I believe so. Okay. I believe so. No, I think I think it's like the. I know it's like the primary like back end, but. Gotcha. Think so. I can look into that um, later. Okay, so basically, this is like the designer view for uh, Canvas apps. Here we can actually look at like the different um, controls that like the, that are that basically make up or compose the screen, and there are different screens. Which is kind of similar to XAML, kind of, <laughs> kind of. You can add a form to the screen. Here are like the different types of screens that are available. So could you note noticing that there's some larger uh, form factors there? Could you detect, okay, we're on a tablet's next to yes. this screen well, on a phone that could be you know like well, they actually have like two different types. They have like one for a phone and they have one for a tablet. So, um, from what like MBAs are like responsive, um, I don't think Canvas apps are. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't think they are. Okay, so. Yeah, you can actually um, view the different components here. If you want to like add or insert something, you can actually go to this, you can click on this add button. Um, here's where you can go to actually uh, add extra data sources to the Canvas app. So here we actually have uh, SharePoint, but the Dataverse, like we have all the tables that are available in the Dataverse here, that if we want to add those into the app, we can. Um, we want, like, these are the different connectors that are available. As I said, you can mix and match the different uh, connections, like the data connections, into Canvas, Canvas apps. If you want to add media or images, you can do that. We're not going to get into flows, but basically they're like web services. It's kind of like an automated, uh, yeah, we're not going to get into that. Variables, if you want to declare a variable. Um, no, it's more like a, it's kind of like, like a, um, like that, like kind of like a mobile app or like a desktop. I mean, it's more, 
it's not really a you can access it over the internet, but you you normally like download it or you you can. Um, I think you can. I mean, I think you can access it like on different types of devices, uh, but. No, it actually you can actually get to it through a through the browser, um, through a web link. You basically have to like someone has to share it with you, and like whenever you go to that link, you'll see like the um, yeah yes yes I've done that before. So there's like a power apps like like um, like download that you can I've done that before. But I think you have to have like you still have to have like licensing for all that. So that's the only thing. Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Um I I don't know. I'd have to look into that. He asked like being that they're like Xamarin, um, I mean being that they're like Xaml, are you able to um, make uh, Xamarin forms and import them, import them into this. Wow. Okay. I know that you can basically create like your own like uh, server, like you can well not server control, but like you can make your own component, um, your own controls. Like they're called components. Um, I've done that before. Yeah. But um, yeah, so we were what we were going to do is um, add like a new salesperson. That's what I was going to walk through. You guys, let's see. Okay, so we're going to go here. So I added the button here, um, and basically, what I'm going to do is um, basically program it to navigate to a form to be able to add like the new salesperson to it. Here we go. Elizabeth, are, yes. are you mix and match? Uh, like if you just have one form that's like standard thing and have it navigate into like a, a model-based form in the I, same app? I don't know. I don't. Okay. I'm just I'm trying to think if you can have some random. I feel like that's a no, but I I, I feel like that's a you can't. But, yeah. Because if it was me, I want like all my slide stuff to be super easy and, mm -hmm. and then like have a really nice slide. Oh. That's just me. Okay. Yeah. And then it's going to be. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Yeah. Okay. I guess I should talk about these. So basically, like these are like the different properties that are associated with the controls um, on the screen. Um, so if you're familiar with XAML or um, yeah, if you're familiar with XAML, you kind of you would understand this. There's a language called PowerFX that um, actually controls all of this. And I have like the formula ref because it's it's supposed to be for business users, not devs necessarily. So um, it, it's similar to it's more similar to Excel opposed to uh, C sharp, like the code behind. How powerful of a power does, it, does somebody have to be? If I wanted to hand this off and say, show me what you really want. I mean, 
how they have to be like an Excel expert or something like I mean, or can regular people make something happen just by dragging and dropping and moving stuff around? Um, well, opinion. Oh, my opinion. Yeah, your opinion. Um, so being that I'm a dev, I feel like if you give them like tutorials, like some type of, and I actually included a couple, like they probably can figure it out because it makes, it becomes intuitive, but then I'm a dev, so it makes sense to me. So I, I mean, I, I, I think it makes sense. It's like you have like the different events and the different, um, like the different prop properties that are associated with like the different controls. And you basically, I mean, if you, if, They've used Word. They know that if you if you're controlling like font size, you enter in a certain number to for that. So it's kind of like that same concept. But I mean, I think there's a bit of a learning curve, but I think they would be able to get it because it's built for them, not necessarily for devs. But we, I mean, obviously we can master it too. Um, I just wanted to show it to you guys so that way you could. It's something that you could like quickly build if you have a friend or a family member that wants to. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm trying to cut the umbilical cord. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. Yeah, I, I like, I like the, the technology. Like, I, I like it, but I don't know if this is what you were expecting. Oh, okay. So what I am doing Okay, so Okay, there we go. So basically what I just did, I added a um, added a new salesperson screen and I am basically setting up the event where it will reroute to the salesperson, like the new salesperson screen whenever the, I mean, whenever the user clicks on this button. Yeah, pretty, pretty intuitive. Yeah. By that, you mean, like, where you set self and things like that. Yep. Yeah, you can also declare variables um, using set. So you can make it a lot more, uh, like, basically have, like, like, literal statements, as, like, what we're used to when we program. But normally, if you go to, the, like, the website, I mean, like, the website or the documentation, it's going to show you, like, one-liners as far as, like, the code is concerned. But, I mean, you can actually have, like, a... A whole, I don't want to say paragraph, but a, a, like a block of code. Yes, yes. So, um, yes, because I use set. They have uh, two different types of variables, or they have like, um, con I think they're called context variables, but normally I just use this because it, it's, um, I don't want to say it's like global, like global to the app, like you can access it on multiple screens. So basically, this is a screen, and this screen has a form attached to it. And I am going to set the data source of the form to be um, the, hold on. 
I'm actually, so you, we can configure it here, like in this drop down. This basically shows like all the different properties and events that are associated with that form in like this area, or you can actually like just basically set it up here. So being that we want to add a new salesperson, we are going to configure it. Yes. So, and so basically it, um, it has like a set of uh, fields that it automatically adds to it. And we can actually edit the fields here. If we want to remove or delete one, which we are going to do, we don't need attachments. We don't need the full name. We do need the title because it's required, but we can actually configure it here. Change the, the label, which I'm sure you guys are familiar with. Um, Actually, that's not, that's actually not the. Yeah. So basically, whenever the user and it's already set up this way, like it'll actually submit the uh, new new salesperson, so it'll automatically update the data source that it's um, basically sending this to. So I think it's pretty, pretty cool. Did it base that off of the, off of the salesperson table? Um, it actually based it on the salesperson list, mm -hmm. so in SharePoint. Okay. So base, I, I don't know how uh, familiar you guys are with SharePoint, but you basically SharePoint is kind of like, a, you can set it up where it's like a table, essentially. Um, and so we're, and you can also do this with Excel. You can convert an Excel sheet to like into like import it into SharePoint and uh, draw data from there. So it's it's pretty cool. Um, and this also connects with SQL as well, but we're using SharePoint. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool too. Uh, let's see. So here's like the SharePoint list. Uh, I didn't go through this because it's not directly related to Power Apps, but um, here's like the, the list that like where you can see all the different fields that are part of um, the salesperson list, like on SharePoint, the different types. I'm sure you get, well, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with that. So let's see. And then you can Yes, so basically here is actually where we would import the, um, like the different, here's like the connector in this area. This is where you add the data. And so these are like the different types of connectors that are available. You can go to like see all connectors, but um, some, of, some of them you have to have a premium license. Some of them you have to have a standard license um, available, but uh, yeah, these are like the different connectors that are available. If you wanted to connect to like a like the dataverse, um, like which is the area that we went in first, you can do it here. Yes. So um, I actually am going to change this to a different icon so that way it navigates backwards. There we go. We're gonna enter in back. So whenever the user clicks on this, they can just go back to the uh, salesperson list. This is actually the completed one. I have a question. Actually, I 
Bom. So if we want to, why is this so close? So if we want to run it and see what's going on with it, we can here. So right now it is actually transferring to this page. So this is kind of like a like kind of like a run um, for it. No, I'm, that's what I'm, have to, let's see, go here, I believe this is like new salesperson. <laughs> okay, now that's not it. I'm actually going to comment this out. That's what I actually needed to do. Yep. So if we want to call the sales associate one name Mary. Um, I think you can set it up that way. I didn't do that for this presentation. I think you can set it up that way, though. I'm going to set this to Alicia. So, okay, so this is a new salesperson. Okay. We're going to navigate back to the front, and then we're going to, oh, hold on. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fast. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah. So, yeah, I wanted to show you guys that. Um, just how quickly you can basically build that out. And we're going to go back to our presentation. So basically the way the licensing, um, let's go back to. Okay. So there's basically like three different licensing schemas um, or schemes. Basically, there's a Power Apps Premium, which is where each user has like unlimited access to all apps in an environment. There, uh, there are Power like you can get, do like the Power Apps Pure App, where you basically pay for each user to have access to like one app. And then there's a Power Apps Pay as You Go, which is really good for people who like if you have users in an organization that may every now and then access an app. And let, let's say that you have. Um, 
Some users may access this app, some may not. If you use pay as you go, then the ones who don't use that app for that month don't aren't you're not charged for them. And the people who do use that app, you are. So So basically with Power Apps, um, you don't have to turn your friends and family away anymore as a dev uh, because now you can um, you can basically save time using uh, Power Apps. So. But yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, you have to pay for uh, licensing. It's kind of unfortunate, but that's kind of the, the di there are different like uh, schemes for that. But yep. Yes. Um. So the Power Portal is, I guess, like I didn't really touch on that. Because that's like for unauthenticated, like the anonymous users. I guess they could see that, like the website. I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't. I guess so. Um, so he, he actually just brought up something, because I was thinking you were talking about Canvas apps, but Power Portals, I believe you can like give like on like anonymous users access to certain things like through websites like because it's a website it's not a it's not an app but for canvas apps like they need to be licensed like canvas apps and model driven apps they need to they need to have a license so yeah thank you for bringing that up yeah yes that's what that's basically what like the use cases it's for internal um, use. Yeah. I don't know like why they're why they're called Canvas apps, but I'd like them. Um, cause I, like is I mean that's like super fast. Like we probably did that in like 10, 10 minutes max. So, and it, I think the interface looks pretty good. So, yeah. Well, I am done. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Thank you for <laughs> sitting through the presentation. <laughs> Thank you.